Hello, I am Yuri Dukovny with Netscape Solutions Architecture. Today I will show you how you can gain complete visibility into your employees' access to the AWS environment, as well as apply access controls centrally, assuring that only the access to your organization's owned and approved AWS accounts is allowed from on-premises and remote company-managed devices. When your organization is advancing in public cloud adoption and your public cloud footprint starts growing rapidly, it's very easy to lose visibility into your employees' cloud access. With the increasing number of accounts and resources, broader adoption of the cloud services and opening cloud access to wider groups of employees, it becomes difficult to follow the least privileged access patterns and to assure that each and every employee or group of employees have the minimum required level of access to the right cloud resources. Moreover, when AWS IAM does provide you granular access control for your employees' access to your company-owned AWS accounts and resources, it cannot restrict your employees from accessing unauthorized AWS accounts and resources not owned by your organization. Similarly, when you can see each and every AWS API request to your organization accounts and services in the AWS Cloud Trail, security administrators have no visibility into employees potentially accessing their private or otherwise non-approved accounts. Netscope Inline Cloud Protection provides complete visibility into your employees' access to AWS accounts and resources in one single place. It also enables you to completely secure access to AWS platform, assuring only access to the approved, organization-owned, and controlled AWS accounts and resources allowed from company-managed devices. This provides your ability to secure your data perimeter and effectively protect your organization's assets from being leaked to unauthorized AWS environments. Let's take a look at some examples. We'll start from the user experience accessing AWS environment from a company-managed device. Bob has a company-owned laptop with Netscope steering client always enabled, which streams all Bob's traffic to the Netscope security cloud. Following the organization's security practices, Bob uses temporary credentials for AWS CLI and signs into AWS environment with AWS SSO. Bob redirected to the company identity provider to sign in, enters the credentials there, redirected back to the AWS SSO, authorizes the device session and chooses power user access to the production account. Here, Bob lists the content of the S3 bucket being used by one of the company applications. Bob is looking how to modernize and improve performance of this application and wants to research how Amazon Redshift Amazon Data Warehouse service can be used by this application. Amazon Redshift is not approved yet by the company InfoSec department and it's blocked by the AWS Service Control Policy as well as by the Netscope Inline Cloud Protection Policy. Bob doesn't want to waste time. He has a personal AWS account where Bob created an S3 bucket. In this bucket's access control list, Bob already set up the organization's production account as grantee with right access permissions. Now Bob tries to transfer the data from the company production S3 bucket to his personal bucket for experimenting there. As you can see, this transfer has been denied and Bob gets the clear message from the Netscope client. Bob understands that the data transfer to the S3 buckets outside of the organization is blocked by the security administrator, although he still wants to experiment with Amazon Redshift and maybe to find another way to get data to his personal account. First, Bob tries to download production data to his company computer, and this also has been denied by the Netscope inline cloud protection. Bob understands that he cannot get production data for his experiments. Also, he has some test data locally on his device, and he decides to use it for the Redshift tests. Bob sets up a new AWS CLI profile with the permanent credentials he generated for his private AWS account on his computer at home. 
Bob tries to list Amazon Redshift clusters on his personal account using these credentials, then tries to download objects from his private S3 bucket, even lists EC2 instances, and realizes that all requests to the AWS accounts and resources not approved by his organization have been denied. Now, let's take a look at the security administrator experience. As Netscope admin, I'm going to the Netscope management console and then to the Netscope advanced analytics. I have the report here ready that shows me what AWS accounts have been accessed by my employees. When I started adopting Netscope inline cloud protection, this report helped me to identify an authorized and authorized AWS account access and to tighten my Netscope inline access policies. Now I use this report to further improve my organization cloud security posture by identifying and limiting access to the specific AWS accounts to the specific users and groups. For example, I can see that Alice is our interim contractor and Alice is not supposed to access this production account. I go to the Scopit application events logs where I see all requests going out from my company managed devices to the AWS platform. I filter by Alice's user ID and I see all AWS API calls that Alice issued. I see, for example, that Alice was listing EC2 instances on that account. I want to create an inline policy that would limit contractors from accessing EC2 resources on this AWS production account. I already have an application instance for EC2 on this production account, so I go to the inline protection menu. I click on the create policy, choose the contractors group, the users and groups synchronized from my Netscope tenant using System for Cross-Domain Identity Management or Scheme from my identity provider. Choose the AWS production account application instance I've just created and set the blocking action for this policy. I put the policy on top and apply changes. Now, if Alice tries to access EC2 resources on this production account, her access will be denied by Netscope inline cloud protection. Lastly, let's take a look at the policies that were preventing Bob from making mistakes and potentially leaking company's data. I go to the inline protection policies again and look at the AWS services policies. As you can see, I have two policies here. The first policy allows access to the organization's approved AWS services and accounts, while the second one denies access to any other AWS services, accounts, and resources. You've just seen how Netscope Inline Cloud Protection provides you complete visibility into your employees' AWS access beyond your organization's accounts and allows you to control your cloud adoption by allowing access to only approved AWS accounts and resources.